Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited and so happy. Uh, my name is Lisa Blunt, Rochester, and uh, the Blunts are well represented here. I'm representing my mother, Alice Blunt, my sister, Thea Blunt Fowler, and my other sister, Marla Blunt Carter, and also our, our children, Ted's five grandchildren. It's, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Uh, I get to introduce my dad, and many have already talked about, and you can read in the, the bio, that he is an athlete, an educator, uh, a father, uh, a public servant. But what I wanted to do is something a little different than the traditional uh, introduction. Um, those who, and there are so many friends and family out here in the audience, and then some of you who are new to even meeting my dad. And so instead of um, just reading a bio or something like that, I want to read to you a poem that I wrote about him some years back. And uh, some of you may re recognize some of the references to, to Ted or Teddy or Theo or Theodore. And um, some of you who have been around him remember him and his VW bug driving around the city or you know, playing basketball with young people or giving out scholarships. Or you might have heard him reference the bear. Before Leonardo DiCaprio was going for an Academy Award for beating up a bear, Ted was beating up bears. So the name of this poem to my dad is called The Bear. And here we go. You talking to me? You don't know me. I'm Teddy, the kid who jumped into the Schuylkill River and set a car on fire. Yeah, making money off of mama's card games. That's right, the curly-haired, curly-headed, basketball-bouncing, badass kid from Philly. You talking to me? I'm Teddy, como se va, dribbling hearts on the court of love, till my shot was blocked by a little red fox. You talking to me? I'm riding a soul train into your black consciousness. 1970s Black Expo, and we're breaking up gang wars and fighting wars while Sly and the Stone family sing, I am everyday people. And the dimensions are flying up, up, and away. And my afro is so fly it can't even fit into my car. <laughs> you talking to me? I got a head start at a people settlement, and it took me a trans century at WHA to get to Red Clay. But hey, I'm here. Yeah, I got three girls who turned my hair white. <laughs> With a neighborhood full of kids yelling, it's Teddy time, it's Teddy time. Kids in line, throw me higher, daddy, throw me higher. Thrown high expectations, motivating and molding a new generation of leaders. You talking to me? So I'm a soup slurping, flat footed, loud sneezing, no butter on my toast or mayonnaise on my sub, VW bug driving with an attitude or Hollywood smile kind of guy who went from desert boots to Armani suits. Fired up for a cause, cause there's no justice, just us. Till one day, it's just me. You talking to me, Lord? What you mean I'm working too hard and you got it under control? What you mean you've got rest for my weary soul? Damn, I'm weary and worn, tired and torn. Feel like I'm fighting alone and ain't nobody getting it. Calling me names, say I'm playing games, but I do believe no justice, no peace. How can you look into a baby's eyes and not want a better world? Say I'm ego tripping, but my street lessons ain't yours. Survival of the fittest is the game. The bear gets you or you get the bear. I ain't say it's fair, but you tell me how you'd be if you were me. Make no mistake, I'm a sinner saved by grace, but I found someone who could take the pain and hurt, the betrayal and dirt, melt it, shape it, and make it sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see me, I see we, I see thee. Ted Blunt is my dad. Ted Blunt is the person who is my hero. Uh, I am just, 
I'm blessed to have been born to this, this, this um, incredible family and this incredible dad. And as many of you know, I chose to run for office uh, this year, this past year, and I have a new appreciation for my dad. He has always been my hero, but now I, I see a whole new side to him. And um, I, I just want to thank him. He has been everything. He's our, our confidant. He's our preacher. He's our puppet master. Go this way, go that way. Like he told everybody, stop clapping. That's what he does to us. Um, he gives orders. He's really good at giving orders. But he's been the father to our kids if they needed it. He's, he's, he's been the father to so many people's kids, even though his father wasn't around. Um, I'm just so immensely proud of him. This honor today, it's funny because this guy has probably turned down so many opportunities to be honored. And, and, and Dave Baylor said, I can't believe I got honored before your dad, you know? <laughs> and, 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 and to be honest with you, I, knowing my dad, he only did this for me. So that's the kind of person that we're honoring today. Somebody who people don't realize is really humble, you know, is really just a public servant, a person who cares about people. And uh, I'm just very proud and humbled, and I'm glad that all of you are here to share and to honor him while he's here to smell the roses. And with that, I will turn it over to our governor or to my dad. That was such a great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on down, Ted Blunt. Come on up. You talking to me? <laughs> uh, the thing that's funny is uh, she had written that 20 years ago. And, uh, and I said to her, that captured me from the beginning to where I am right now. And I thought that that would be important, especially if there were going to be young people in the audience. Because they need to realize that none of us get to where we are without other people. And I've managed to get to where I am because of other people. So let me start off by first thanking Dell Tech for this noble honor, to the former honorees for their presence being here today, and just all of you for showing up. Uh, according to a friend of mine, uh, Sonny Hill, he said, did you have to pay everybody? I said, no, Sonny, <laughs> not today. <laughs> so. <laughs> But I've been known to pay people to do things, so <laughs> uh, that's, that's the lighter side of me. <laughs> but I do have some personal friends, people that have known me just starting out, just growing up, uh, starting out in Philadelphia, whether it's Sunny Hill, Ollie Johnson, Bob Vanderhoes, uh, Bill Baggett. Uh, those are people that pretty much grew up with me in Philadelphia. And my initial claim to fame was really just being a basketball player but having the skill set of a student. Now notice, basketball player, but the skill set of a student. Because we have a lot of athletes that are out there that are just athletes. And once they complete that tenure, they're gonna fall down the tube. And so I stress always the importance, if you are an athlete, also be a student. If you ain't smart, don't hang around with dumb people. <laughs> and that's what happens normally. So again, those are my friends growing up. Those are the ones that have been with me early on as I've made this journey. And those are just two of my personal friends. In fact, one is coming in now, Dave Riddick. Uh, but he's also from South Philadelphia, so we'll forgive him because people in South Philly never show up on time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have uh, political friends that are here. And, and, and I'll just start with the county exec. Uh, going back to 202, I actually had prostate cancer. And during that period of time, I did not know what to do. And I had two thoughts. I said, well, I'm going to die, so I just as well spend all my money and not tell my family. Uh, <laughs> uh, and a uh, friend of mine, Tom Gordon, came by with some flowers and some fruit. And he said, hey, look, you know, it's going to be a brighter day. Just go through the process. And so, Tom, again, thank you for being here for that. Uh, 
also in that political circle, starting out with people like Jim Sills and Jim Baker. Uh, Jim Sills' mother was the one that recommended me for the job at People's Settlement when I came here in 1969. So that's how I started. Started as a social worker. Got involved in political life with the likes of people like Jim Baker, who used to say to me, you can be right, but you're not going to win. And so <laughs> until I learned how to win right and be right, you know, I sort of got a lesson from Jim. But again, a mentor, a friend, and a very personable person. The kind of person that the average one of you might not ever see, but a person that puts his heart above his head, and that we don't often do. We have the current mayor, Dennis P. Williams, who actually lost his first campaign to me. He, he, do, he doesn't want to admit it, but he's, he's now the mayor because he lost to me and he learned how to run right. So, Mayor, thank you very much. Hey. Uh, and the other one sitting right next to him is the guy that actually beat me as a Republican. You believe that? I was a Republican once? And that was Penrose Hollins, and then he rode around the neighborhood five or six times in his car. Ooh, ooh, ooh. thank you very much, Penrose. Uh, but again, always a very close friend, and we all became friends. We did not take politics personal. We took it as an activity that occurred on that particular day, and we were able to move on. So both to Dennis and to Penrose and to Tom Gordon, who has always most certainly been there. And then we have current members of city council that are in the audience, but mainly we have two former presidents, starting with Norm Griffiths and Theo Gregory. Uh, Theo and Norm served with me, and then Theo was off council, and then he's back on. Both are presidents, along with Jim Baker, who taught the three of us. So can you imagine in this room, you have four people that were once presidents of city council, and one now aspiring to even run for mayor. In fact, both are running for mayor. So we have that here. I did receive a, a note from one person running for the city council presidency, and that's Hanifa Shabazz, as well as a note from Justin Wright, who's also running for city council presidency. And people want to pick sides, but again, the most important thing is that they're stretching out. They're going beyond their natural borders. They're doing something that most people would not normally do. If you want to get involved in political office, you have to be willing to stick your neck out. And that's what they're doing. And then there's a very close friend of mine who's been with me for many, many years, and that's Demetrio Ortega, who was on city council, a person who put his heart in front of everything. He's put himself in front of his church. He's led that church for a number of years. So Demetrio, thank you again for being here. Um, I was going to mention Stephanie Bolden, but she always has something negative to say, so I'm not going to mention her at all. Um, even though she's going to have a fundraiser tonight at 5.30s at Timothy's, and she paid me $20 to mention it. So thank you, Stephanie. And then there's Helene Keeley who said, I'm coming to your event on Tuesday. I said, what event? She said, oh, I think I spilled the beans. And I said, no. I said, I just happened to have forgotten about it, Helene. But again, thank you very much for alerting me to something that I was supposed to be in attendance at, Helene. I, I appreciate that. And the one person that's not here, this area is named after him. This campus is named after him. And that's Dr. Orlando George. Lonnie was the first person that I ran against for the state rep seat, again as a Republican, lost to Lonnie, and then he came to me, he said, hey, look, if you decide to run for anything else, I'll help you as long as you're not a Republican. <laughs> and so that's when I switched parties, uh, contrary to Mike Harkins telling me not to switch parties, but he didn't raise enough money, so I'm sorry, Mike, wherever you are. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to go where the money is. But Lonnie and I started out together. We both taught at Dell Tech when it was on Governor Prince Boulevard. And that's almost uh, 1970. And from there, he moved up the ladder. He became the chairman of the Joint Finance Committee in the House of Representatives. He became the president of Dell Tech. He has since moved on. And this campus is named after him. And that's something that we should all be very proud of. And Lonnie still lives in the city of Wilmington. So Lonnie, wherever you are. Uh, we have the current president of Dell Tech in the back, so I guess he didn't have anything else scheduled today. So, Mark, I want to thank you for being here, along with the governor, 
who cut into your very busy schedules of only seeing two people today uh, to be here with me. <laughs> and then there's a, there's a breakfast group of guys that meet on a regular basis. We meet the second Friday of every month. We're all probably between 65 and I don't know how old, but we're, we're up there in age and we meet just to tell lies. <laughs> Nothing else. Talk about how good we thought we were once upon a time. Uh, but we show up the second Friday of every month. And again, that's 15, 17, 18 guys. Many of them are seated in the audiences. Then I have a Philadelphia sports group. Uh, one or two might be here today. Uh, but we again did the same thing that the group in Delaware is doing. We're meeting on a regular basis. And again, talking about how they can give back to the community. And then I have the Delaware Youth Athletic Association group that was really started with Major Harrison, Maurice Pritchard, uh, Roger Dean, and that's something that we did for 15 years, starting in 1970 all the way up until 1984, where we selected the best boys and girls all-star teams to play against the best teams throughout the country. And we were fortunate enough to get support from both the business community and the government in order to travel to those different cities. And then my group today, that's the Delaware Blue Gold Boys and Girls Basketball Games. And they're held every year. And the person responsible is not here because he's under the weather. And that's Mort Kimmel and his son Larry Kimmel. Every year we do something for special needs youngsters. So instead of talking about what should be done, we're doing something about it by having an event to bring those athletes together to play in a game, to raise funds for best buddies. And again, on all of your chairs, hopefully, they put information about the Blue Gold Boys and Girls All-Star Basketball Games. Again, that's a way to give back to a special needs population. And so often, we don't give back. We are more fortunate enough to say, let's try and get something. Rather than give back, most of us are interested in getting something. Now, in education, we have uh, two superintendents here, uh, uh, Bob Andrzejewski and uh, Merv Doherty, uh, they both learned under me. They, uh, they, they didn't know where the bathroom was. You know. they, they, they couldn't figure out how to deal with the auditors. Uh, little things like that are how to make sure that the budget was right. And I just happened to have been there to serve with both of them over a long period of time. And they're personal friends. You know. It's sort of like most people work in a job and then they leave and go home and there's no connection with that, that job. For me, there's always been a connection with that job in Red Clay, both with Merv and with Bob A. Uh, and they made it a family situation. But prior to those two, the guy that we should all cherish is Joseph E. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Joe was the one that really started it. <laughs> he was a special man from the Wilmington Public Schools to the Newcastle County School District to the Red Clay Consolidated School District. Joe was the leader. He was the one that made sure that all of the administrators in Wilmington did not lose their jobs when there was a consolidation of the school districts. That's important because a lot of administrators lost jobs. Joe made it possible for all of us to keep our jobs until we all retired. So between Joe Johnson, Bob Andrzejewski, Murray Doherty, uh, that was a special time, especially for me because I served in the system for 36 years in charge of special education, special schools, bad ass schools, I mean, you name it. I mean, they, they had me in a number of jobs that nobody else wanted to do, and they just said, well, let's just think and give it to Ted. He'll probably do it. And, and thank God I was fortunate enough to do it because of the supports that they gave me. So that's, that's my education community. Uh, in fact, I forgot to mention two young guys. Uh, one is Nomni and the other is uh, Darius. Uh, Nominee replaced me as, no, 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 not me, Charles Potter. No. Uh, he replaced Charles Potter as the first district councilman, and that was the district that I represented for many years. Nominee has been a very close friend of mine for many, many years, helping me with many campaigns and always being there for me. And then I saw Sherry Dorsey, I think she came in not too long ago, and Justin just came in. Those are members of city council. Those are people that are willing to serve. So often we complain, but we never want to serve. If you see a problem, don't complain about it unless you have an answer. But we're so quick to complain, and we're not willing to sit down and work on any kind of solution. 
And again, I want to commend all of the elected officials because that's what they have to do. They have to sit down and figure out solutions. Now, I've got to get to my family. My daughter, Lisa, mentioned uh, her two sisters. Uh, and all of you know Lisa now because she is running for Congress. And she's following in the family tradition. And that tradition is just willing to serve. Yeah. Most of us don't want to serve unless we're being paid. But if you're willing to serve, you can make a difference. And so she's sticking her neck out. And what can make it possible is for you to say, hey, look, let's look at the candidates. Let's measure the various candidates. And in the end, you're going to come back and say she's the most qualified candidate to represent us. So in elections, you can't sit on the sidelines. You have to get out and do something. And again, it's just a matter of spreading the word. And the word is really what catches on. It's sort of like the drum beat from the days of Africa. How did you find out other things? It was the drum. You are our drum beaters. You're the ones that can put that message out there. So that's Lisa. Then I've got my daughter, Thea, who was an engineer for the Department of Defense for many, many years, managed mil millions of dollars. And she's sort of like the, the, the middle child. Everybody complains about the middle child. Well, I was a middle child, too. So I was between a very smart brother and sister and a very smart younger sister. Uh, but again, the middle child is also the beaver. And she was the beaver in our family. Yeah. And then I have my, 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 my baby, me. Uh, that's Marla. So no telling what she might say to you. So j just be prepared. Uh, uh, every now and then, I just have to calm her down a bit, you know, to, to say, hey, look, you know, you got to calm it down. Uh, but all three are very smart, all three are married, and all three are out of my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I've got five grandchildren that I call a number of names from Shaka Doo Moo Moo to, you know, you got to get up, you know, well, are we, are we going to get paid for doing this? Yes, you're going to get paid. You're going to ride in my car, and we're going to go to McDonald's, but I'm not giving you any money. That's just out of the question. You're paying because you are my servant. And they don't like that at all. And, and the funny thing about life is the way we treat kids will determine how they grow up. If we're constantly giving them things, they never want anything. So therefore, we have to learn the most famous word in the dictionary to say to our children. And that is N-O. Rather than I'm going to give you something. And so that's what we've managed to do with our five grandchildren. Now, most of you are saying, well, I know Ted's been married a long time, but, <laughs> but not 55 years. So, I mean, we've been married 55 years. Uh, we've had two good years, but we, we've been... <laughs> uh, just, just joking, just joking. <laughs> Uh, uh, right, uh, you know what she said? You talking to me? So, <laughs> but they've, they've really been 55 very, very good years uh, being with her, uh, meeting her in high school, she tracking me down, you know. I mean, what you have to do when you're a star, so. <laughs> uh, but no, she was, she was one of the, the, the fans when I was coming along as a student. You know, I had more interest in basketball and studies, and then all of a sudden, I fall in love. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but again, that's, that's really 55 years, and we've been very, very fortunate and very blessed to, to have been together that long. And if you want a happy wife, just say yes. You know? that's, that's the best suggestion. Men talk in sentences, women talk in paragraphs. So you have to understand the difference. You know, if a lady wants to go somewhere, just say yes. You don't have to go through any kind of debate. And because of me saying yes so often and so many times, I've had a happy life because I have a happy wife. So. And finally, I want to thank Reagan. This is her, her, her swan song. I said, you can't go out on a better note than this, Reagan. I said, you know, I said, here it is. She's getting ready to retire this year, and 
She said, I needed to come up with something that's really going to make me stand out at Dell Tech. They're going to put my picture on the wall or something, you know? So I said, if, I said well, the only picture I know on the wall is Penrose's. So I said, if you're going to be up there with Penrose, that, that'll be a, a mag magnificent thing. Uh, and in closing, I just want to thank all of you for allowing me this opportunity to be in Delaware, to be in Philadelphia, but most importantly, to be able to serve and to take advantage of all of your knowledge and all of your wisdom and all the thoughts that you've given to me to make me a much better person, whether it's Baker telling me don't do this, or whether it's Sonny Hill telling me something, whether it's Monte telling me, he said, what, what big man should I use? Just tell him to run over somebody, Monte, that's all. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's, that's what you really have to do. And most people know her as B.B. Coker, but we call her the beefster. Like a hamster, you have a beefster. So she's a beefster to us. But all of you have certainly made my life a much better life. And being in Wilmington has made me a much better person. And also knowing everybody in the room has been a blessing for me. And so thank you very much. And now we have some who would like to make special remarks. Governor Markell. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me just say, Kathy, uh, not taking you up on your offer to speak before Lisa and Ted was one of the worst mistakes I've ever made. Uh, I am just still trying to process no to grandchildren, yes to wife. All right, all right. I better not mess that one up. I could be, I could be in big trouble. Um, Lisa, first of all, you are a woman of many, many talents. I knew that. I knew you were a poet, and that was really beautiful. But I, I, some of you know, a couple months ago, I um, named Namdi and Al the awesome twin poets to be the Poets Laureate of Delaware. And... Um, They, they really, they are an incredible gift. There's no question about it. But uh, if one of you guys gets sick sometimes, I, I know where to go. I mean, that, that was like rap almost before rap existed. The justice and just us and the whole thing, that was, that was good. That, that, was, that was very good. Um, I do want to thank the Delaware Tech family uh, for putting this on. Uh, awesome. And I think, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to attend these events before. And Ted, you join an illustrious group, really, truly an extraordinary group of people who have been very uh, deserving uh, winners uh, of this award. And you, you are right there with them. You are right there with them. And when I reread, I mean, I knew your bio, but when I reread it again before coming over here today, I frankly could not believe how long you've been married. <laughs> I mean, you, you look so much younger than he does. I don't know how that, I, I don't know how that, holy cow. That's unbelievable. Jeez, that's amazing. Um, but you, I mean, you do, you embody what awards like this ought to be about. Yeah. You really do. And I, I, you know, whether it, I mean, for, you, you got to start with the family. Yeah. You, you got you to start with the family because you have the most wonderful, accomplished, uh, you know, beautiful daughters. Uh, and the tribute to the two of you uh, for that, I mean, in, th in this day and age, that alone would be reason for an award like this, honestly. I mean, what, you know, how you, go ahead, sorry. Um, how you help them navigate, you know, not, not only through sort of, you know, the ups and downs of life, but to be, as a parent myself of a 20-year-old and a 23-year-old, I'm, uh, I'm a little way, I mean, I, I'm a little ways away from being able to look back as you can now, not, you know, and they've got wonderful lives still in front of them, but you can know with, you know, a lot of confidence, if something terrible happened to you tomorrow, your daughters would be in unbelievable shape. I mean, and they're gonna, you know, they have, they have wonderful lives and a great future. And I think uh, I just, uh, there can't be any greater feeling in the world. And then I think about, Ted, where you've, uh, 
what you've done. I mean, you are, you know, you are a servant. And to think about all the kids that you touched, you know, through your three, more than three decades uh, at Red Clay, and all the kids you've touched through all of the other organizations that you've been involved in, it's got to be thousands and thousands and thousands. I mean, it's huge. And that's, of course, the beauty of being an, an educator. You get to touch so many people, and, and, and the impact that you have leverages and so many, they get to leverage all of the, the, the insight that you've provided to them. And it must be an amazing feeling now to, to run into, I'm sure you see a lot of them, you know, throughout town and beyond, uh, and to see what, you know, the way that they have built their lives and what a feeling it must be uh, to, to say, you know, I helped shape them and mold them in some, in some way. And, beyond, and then you've got your public service, uh, then you've got your elective service. I mean, it really is an extraordinary life. And, and as, you know, Lisa said, it's nice that we have this celebration. I mean, the way we talk about it, it sounds like you're, you know, not going to be here a lot longer. But the, tr I, but the truth is, I, anybody who would look at you would say you're still in your prime. And I guess it's because of the way you've taken care of yourself and, and certainly, you know, having been such, having been such a gifted athlete, um, and, you know, sometimes you see really gifted athletes who, when they are athletic, when their playing days stop, they really get out of shape. I mean, you look, you look unbelievable, you know, it, seriously, you look great. And so I just think this is a, uh, this is, this is a, uh, you, are, you are a great example and you are a great role model, uh, you know, certainly to everybody in this room and to you know, everybody throughout this community that you have served so ably for so long and to people uh, well beyond uh, this area as well. So I have a tribute. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It, it really talks about your remarkable uh, career, some of which is, is laid out in the, in the biography. But uh, I am just I, I am thrilled to be here to, uh, to help all of, these, uh, all of these folks honor you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And at this time, Representative Keeley has a tribute that she will present. Good afternoon, everyone. Ted, I'm not a man, so I don't have one word. I have a paragraph. <laughs> Or two or three. Um, th first of all, I want to thank everyone for being here today. I mean, you can just see the amount of respect that is in this room for Ted Blunt, and he very well deserves it. Uh, as someone who is, who is now in her 20th year of office, believe it or not, I've known Ted pretty much the whole entire time. I mean, when he was on city council and he worked with my father um, for a number of years, and the amount of guidance and just really wonderful conversations that Ted and I have had over the 20 years that I've been in office and while he was in city council, I, I, I cherish them and I really do. You may not have thought I was not listening, but I was listening, I promise. And, and I really do appreciate those conversations we had uh, when we were dealing with city issues and, and state. And obviously I had a wonderful opportunity to work with Lisa on many different topics and Marla on many different topics. And the love for your family, as the governor said, it's just so real and just so, you can see it. And it's so very proud that you have such a wonderful family. And for the students in the room that are here to, to listen and learn, there is so much opportunity out there for you. Just never give up on your dreams. Never, ever, ever give up on your dreams. <laughs> so if I can just very quickly, a couple years ago, um, I started to listen, or I signed up for a website. 
I had to change my password this morning, it took me a second, about Black History Month. And when I, when I saw today's entry, um, I get an email every morning during Black History Month and I read it. And it was, just, I knew that I was coming here to Dell Tech and I found it somewhat ironic. But in 1879, Mary Eliza Mahoney became the first registered black nurse in the US. In, for Black History Month, and we were here at Dell Tech. Dell Tech recently announced that they want to expand the opportunities for nursing from just an associate's degree to a degree, a bachelor's degree, and I just thought that was so appropriate when it popped up this morning, so I wanted to save that. Um, but I have my colleague here, Stephanie T. Bolden, and I know Stephanie served with Ted on City Council. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I had the privilege of, of serving with your father and the uh, former president of the city council, Ted Blaine. He's looking at me. He says I'm always complaining, but I'm really not. He was a really, really, he was a yes, mentor for me. And uh, when I first got on council, he took me around. He, and he took me to Philadelphia where I met a person that meant a lot to me in my life, and, and that was Marion Tasco. Uh, there were no <coughs> women on city council that were African American that were here that could even mentor me or, or give me any guidance. And, um, by doing that, she became a fantastic friend and mentor, and she just retired after 40-some years uh, on uh, Philadelphia City Council. Uh, Ted uh, is truly amazing, and I, I say bless you, Latrell, uh, for those 55 <laughs> years. <laughs> when we were in South Africa, we got to go there uh, when after Mandela was elected. Uh, of course, I maxed out all my credit cards the first week I was there. And I bought all these things, and I had to use Ted's suitcase to get my stuff back into the United States. So he'll tell you that story, but he never tells you the fact that he's also rich. And he's rich because he never pays for anything. <laughs> but, but, but in all seriousness, I, I truly appreciate the friendship. I've adopted myself into their family. I love each and every one of you, and this is during Black History Month, it is also great to look back at the history, but it's more important to look at the history that has been made here in the state of Delaware and among the people that are still living and thank them for everything that they've done. So I thank you, uh, Mr. Blunt, uh, for all the years in the service, even though you're 20 years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ted, we have a couple tributes for you. Um, the House tribute, if you want me to read it, I'm more than happy to, but I think uh, we should probably get along in, in the program. Um, but it's signed, it's from everybody in the House, and it's signed by um, the Wilmington delegation. And I know uh, Representative Potter and, and Representative Brady uh, were disappointed that they could not be here today. And I also have a tribute from the Senate, and that's signed by Senator Margaret Rose Henry, Senator Harris McDowell, and Senator Bobby Marshall. Um, all of who, again, could not be here today, but they are here in spirit celebrating this wonderful tribute to you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to call up Councilman, President, Theophilus Gregory. Thank you very much. Since I just saw this, I'm going to be smart and let one of the other council persons read it. <laughs> See, so I won't mess up any words. But anyway, I realized I was blessed when Ted ran for the district council seat and I ran at large. Being an at-large councilman is like running a mile. You get to pace yourself and go real slow. When you're a district councilman, it's like a 100-yard dash. Really, it's like a 55-yard dash. I had the opportunity to grow up on council for a couple of years. I didn't have any constituent complaints. <laughs> Ted got all the constituent complaints. <laughs> so I was able to lay back in the cut, <laughs> take my time, and watch Ted and Baker argue with one another all the time. <laughs> right, Ted? I didn't have to do any arguing, because I was at large. I just took my time and grew up on council. <laughs> with that, I'm going to ask. <laughs> You, 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 that's the way it works. <laughs> I'm going to ask one of the council people to, uh, I have Sherry Dawson Walker, Nam Dijakwocha, 
Justin Wright and uh, Darius Brown. We're going to ask Darius if he would please read the resolution. The whole thing. The whole thing, yes. All right. <laughs> oh, man. He's seen it for the first time, too. We're, we're going to say congratulations <laughs> and thank you in, in interest of time. And uh, as you taught me, we'll put it in a frame for you. Thank you. We're really having a good time here today, huh? <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call up President Mark Brainerd, Dr. Kathy Jandier, and Dr. Laura Johnson. And Ted, could you also join them right in the middle?